Hello everyone and welcome to your seventh lesson on Charlie Harper's bird art. Now we're not actually looking at birds today, we're going to be looking at something closely linked and definitely is seasonal for this time of year. Let's go and find out. Today is all about bird's eggs, about colour and composition. This may be a new term for you. So let me explain what I mean by composition. The word composition means putting together, putting things together. A bit like layout, how we lay out different elements, different aspects of a piece of art. And the idea of a composition explains how elements within a work of art are arranged. And when I talk about elements, I'm referring to aspects of the work of art, like lines, the colours, the shapes, the textures, and the space of the page. So composition, meaning how different parts of the artwork are arranged together on the page or the canvas. Let me show you one particularly interesting composition by Charlie Harper. This artwork, titled Eggs, can be found in his collection called The Animal Kingdom. And this was created in and around 1968, when Harper was in his mid 40s. And this image is of what do you think? Well, think about the title and look at what you can see. Not just one egg, and not just two or three or even four, it's a multitude of different eggs, all layered atop each other. And do you know what I think when I look at this artwork? I'm reminded of the organization of the planets in our solar system in different orders from the sun. Just a fun thing to think about. This artwork was created using gouache or acrylic paint onto Playmite paper. And what he's done is he's explored different sized bird's eggs and compiled them together. He's composed them together on the page. Which do you think is the tiniest one? Can you put your finger on the tiniest wee bird's egg there? Right, it's that little white one right down at the bottom there. And the largest one, what colour is that? And what details do you notice about it? Yes, the largest one is this cream shape we can see in the background with some speckles of brown on top. All together, how many different eggs can you count in this composition? Did I hear somebody saying nine? If so, you are correct. The other thing I really like about this is how the different colours contrast each other on each layer. Frequently we move from light to dark, back to light to dark again. And I think the blues, the creams, the browns, the reds really balance each other out. There's lots of different textures going on here too. And the stippled and the dappled egg surfaces to the smoother surfaces. And we'll be looking at how we can recreate that today too. Bit of a close up here. Now the colors may be muted. They may not be the boldest colors, the brightest colors in the world, but still when put together, they're really visually interesting. They complement and contrast each other. The blue, the red, the creams and the browns. What we're going to focus on today is exploring examples of bird's eggs found in Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And from this, you're going to create your own beautiful bird egg composition arranged in a layered, layered composition like we've seen with Harper. To begin with, these are actual photographs of bird's eggs, common birds. 
Can you see the word magpie there? Mm-hmm, down in the bottom row there on the right hand side, blue with brown speckles. And above it, the jackdaw. Quite similar in coloration. What about, can you find me, a raven? A raven like those that live at the Tower of London. Can you find the raven egg? Sure, on the top row, right in the middle. Bigger than all the rest. The light green background against the brown mottle texture. Also here we have a rook and a carrion crow. Rooks, ravens, crows, magpies, jays, jackdaws and chuffs many of which you have, I do not doubt, seen in your local area. I just love the colours here. Do you? More familiar eggs for you on the far left hand side. Quail's eggs. Smallest of the lot. Cream with brown dapples. Geese eggs, the biggest here. They're a nice white creamish colour. Followed by duck eggs and hen eggs, duck eggs. When I was growing up in a farm in Northern Ireland, my uncle used to drop around duck eggs every day and I tell you they're a very, very strong flavour. Quite good for making cakes, but they're a very strong flavour compared to hen eggs. Very different looking compared to hen eggs too. And duck eggs are not always white like this. You can get them a lovely light shade of blue. Geese eggs, the largest. And no coincidence, the goose is the largest of all these birds and the quail is the smallest. Birds of prey then. Note the largest egg produced by the golden eagle. And some similarities actually um, between the crow, the jay, the magpie, and even the quail's eggs we looked at before in this stippled, dappled effect. The brown on the surface, the lighter colour surface. Do any of these birds ring familiar to you? Buzzard, osprey, red kite, sparrowhawk, Kestrel, peregrine falcon. Maybe some you've not heard of. Merlin and Hobby, hen harrier. All birds of prey are found within Great Britain and Northern Ireland, but perhaps due to decline in their environment and the availability of food, these birds of prey are now on the decline, some of them. Fascinatingly, these eggs are all so distinctive, either by size or coloration. And it's these differences that make them so interesting, so special. I hope you enjoy pouring over all these details shapes, the sizes, any patterns you might find, colours you're particularly keen on. Today that will be your inspiration for your artwork. Now I'm going to take a selection of these and show you why I'd use them in my composition. To begin, I'm using pencil and drawing paper on which I'm going to sketch my egg composition. Nice rounded curved lines, starting from the biggest egg you can see at the top of the page. And within that, drawing sequentially my smaller eggs, my eight smaller eggs, as you can see, following Harper's artwork. I'm also using watercolour today to add colour and detail to the eggs. Take your time with this step 
and look carefully at the positioning of each egg within the next. You can use a rubber, so have one on hand if you need to do any corrections. I would first of all sketch out lightly my outlines and then retrace over more confidently the darker line when you've done that. I'm now going to begin adding colour. For the largest egg, which may well be a goose egg, I'm going for this light cream colour, slightly darker where it meets the next egg. There's a slight shadow there. You'll see I'm brushing in the one direction and that allows for a smoother application of colour. The next egg is a lovely dark chocolate brown colour. Black copper marrons are friendly chickens with really feathered feet that lay these type of eggs. Did you know that brown eggs are graded on a scale of zero to nine? Zero being white and nine a deep dark brown, like these laid by the marrons. The next egg down in size is speckled. It's brown speckled on a cream shell. And to create this speckle effect, I'm dipping my paintbrush into dark brown and I'm dabbing it lightly across, not really in any pattern at all, but what you could do if you wanted is hold your paintbrush at the very, very top, the tip, and this is a technique of painting with your shoulder and that allows you to create this stippled effect. This kind of egg could be laid by one of the members of the crow or raven family. This next egg may well be a blackbird egg, which are smooth and glossy. They're greeny blue or completely blue eggs and some kind of heavy red brown freckles that can make them seem brown overall. This one is more saturated blue. It's a really nice contrast to the brown and the dappled egg previously. Be sure to clean your brush well between each application of colour and use your tissue paper to blot off any extra water. What kind of chicken lays a red egg, you may ask? Well, these include the Rhode Island red hen and Easter egger hens. Harper, I think, has used a Rhode Island red egg as inspiration for this beautifully deep red colour. Now that I've added all my colour, I'm going to leave this painting to dry. And I'm going to show you then another composition that I've made up using my own imagination. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do today. Create your own composition of eggs in whatever form you'd like. Quail's eggs are very small. They have a mild and slightly gamey taste, similar to a chicken egg, but they've an extra rich creamy yolk and more yolk than the white albumin. Each quail egg is about the size of a large olive. They're shaped like a chicken egg, just smaller, and they're cream colored with a variety of speckles and spots splashed over the shell. The eggs look as though someone took a paintbrush, I think, and splashed brownish paint all over the little egg surfaces. That's what I'm starting with here. Blackbird eggs next. Remember, they're green-blue or completely blue eggs. 
All birds have a nesting period and that's judged when they started to lay their eggs. And for the blackbird, that's usually from March, though some pairs begin earlier. Could even be happening now, close to where you live. What you see me doing here is applying my colour thickly and then using a piece of clean tissue paper to daub off, blot off excess colour and that creates a nice texture on the shell surface. A hen will lay generally the same size and shape egg every time, although her eggs will slowly get larger as she grows older. But every once in a while, a hen egg can come out to be oddly shaped out of the blue. For this one, my chicken egg, I'm going to add brown speckles on top. Like the kind we might see from Dickens chickens. Once you've completed the painting and you've left it to dry, then you can start having fun by adding details of the nest twigs around it. I'm going to be doing this using collage today. And this is going to make my artwork mixed media, meaning a mixture of different ways of applying color and texture, paint, drawing, and using recycled materials. Now I've got some nice tissue paper here, which I'm going to cut into thin strips. And I'm going to glue these, not in any real order, roughly around the eggs themselves to create the suggestion of the nest in which any one of these may be located. You could use newspaper for this. I think that would work really well or as I've done, selection of tissue papers. And you can use different prints, colors. It's completely up to you. This is your little nest, your composition. And once done, do sign your artwork as always and admire. Well done, everyone. I hope you enjoy.